every Monday, your boy Kendrick Avant, agent of gratitude, host of Mindset Over Bullshit University. You can find me on Clubhouse in the mornings at 9 a.m. I have a room called Fuck These Disabilities. I had a fantastic weekend anyway. And it's in this room. I'm trying to share that outlook, that perspective, that mood, that attitude I have towards my disabilities so that other people, other tribes people can vibe with this energy and grow their perspectives like me. Check out what we rocking with this Monday as we jam the room. Fuck these disabilities. I had a fantastic weekend anyway on Clubhouse. Modded by Kendrick Avant, your agent of gratitude. Yo, what's going on, Clubhouse? Your boy is here, Kendrick Avant, the agent of gratitude, man. I have rebranded from multiple sclerosis outlaw to agent of gratitude, and I'm waiting to the end of the week to change myself from agent of gratitude to just my real name, Kendrick Avant. I do these gratitude journals so much that it has infected my personality. It has infected my perspective. It has absolutely transformed my outlook and the way I think about life itself. It's not just the outlook. It's not just that I believe better things are coming. It's that I know better things are coming. I make decisions like better things are coming. I don't stress like better things, like better things are coming. This is what I mean. And I'm all on Clubhouse, and I've been on Clubhouse for over a year, a little over, right around a year and a half. And the one thing that is always missing for me is a place where people like myself, with disabilities, with handicaps, with the limitations, whether seen or unseen, because even my anxiety is ridiculously high dealing with this illness. I have crying episodes weekly. I would say every day, but I work hard, hard, hard on self-care. And working hard on self-care reduces the amount of time you have just to cry, period. The more self-care I do, the less time I have to cry, which is why I only cry a few times a week now. And a lot of times, it's crying out of happiness. It's crying out of gratitude. It's crying because the why statement I have for whatever is going on is so freaking awesome. It is so powerful that even as I'm writing it and my tears are falling on the pad, I know this is some good shit. Like I can see myself the next week or the next month, months down the line, reading that particular journal from that particular day over that specific entry, whatever the hell happened. And I know in a few months when I'm reading this journal, that's just gonna make my ass smile all over again. That's the power of your gratitude journal. This is how you keep things going. This is how you prevent and reduce the amount of anxiety, the amount of stressors, all your issues with relationships, your overthinking what the kids have done, you're overthinking the last things you said to a loved one. You're wishing more people were around you. And I have so many less of any of those thoughts because I'm always busting my ass working on my gratitude. Even if I'm not writing yet, I'm still busting my ass working on my gratitude. I might put it on, on a sheet of paper. I might write notes in my cell phone. I might tell somebody else, take a picture, send a picture to me, because even the picture will remind me of something I should write about later on. All of these actions, all of this activity is intentional. It is very much intentional. I am purposely doing these things because I know it distracts me from everything else. It distracts me from the disabilities. It distracts me from, it distracts me from limitations. It distracts me from what bills are due. It distracts me from how much money I have or have not brought in yet because bills don't give a damn about my story. The electricity bill doesn't give a damn about the MS. The water bill could care less that I have spondylosis in my back. 
All of this shit is real talk just like that. So by working on that gratitude journal, you have less negative thoughts and you can keep going past the bullshit that slams you on a regular day. I started this room up because I want people to know, feel, <coughs> I want to create a community that thinks like me. I know there are others that think like me. There are others that don't see these disabilities and these limitations as what they are. There are others that feel as though all of this shit that we go through, seen or unseen, born with it, adapted to it, growing with it, all of this, every last bit, there are others like me. I met a queen in England. And yo, man, this queen has, I believe, cerebral palsy. So she was born with that shit. She was born with the limitations. And she says in, in 2020, she started up a work from home business while at the hospital. In the hospital bed for a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, man, like two or three weeks. Started up in 2020. It's now 2022. And this queen is making over a hundred thousand dollars a year with the work from home gig she started up from a hospital bed. That right there, that kind of shit is mindset over bullshit at its highest. At its highest, man. In a hospital, and you start a business. And you're in the hospital because you're the one being treated. Not because you're there watching somebody else. Not because you're there sitting in the waiting room and you're bored for hours and they do the long surgeries and whatnot. You're in the hospital because you have the issues. You're in the hospital because you have the issues. And with you having the issues comes all the fears, the stress, the anxiety, everything that comes with being in a hospital. Who's going to pay the bill? Do you have the money for the bill? Will the medicine work? Will it interrupt or will it mix in with the other medicines and make all your shit worse? Being in the hospital with a chronic illness is no picnic. That's not the easy route. And a lot of people think if you got a chronic illness, you can go to the hospital and it's like hitting the easy button. Bullshit. It's not. It is not like hitting the easy button. There are not a lot of things to do about your chronic pain. You can take the medicines, but for me personally, taking the medicines only gave me a dependence on the medicines. I'm always hoping the medicine works. I'm always wishing the medicine work. I don't know what to do if the medicine doesn't work. The medicine is the best medicine. And on top of that, the medicine, on top of that, man, the medicine costs money that your boy probably don't even have. That's just real shit. And that's how it goes. And when you're dealing with a chronic illness, when you're rocking with a disability, when you are rolling with the limitation, again, always let you know whether seen or unseen, these things I'm telling you about are every day occurrences, everyday thoughts, every single day you are tripping, you are worried about what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. And that's why the gratitude journal becomes so damn important. I started this room up because I want people to get used to a spot where you come into every day on a Monday and you talk about the shortcomings that your limitations may have given you and you brag, you beat your chest, you scream, you holler, you pound the table about how you overcome it, how you have overcome whatever limitation life threw at you, whether it's life, whether it's your illness or your disability or the kids or the bills, whatever it is that life threw at you, you got to throw that shit right back to 
life. It's not what we're doing, man. So I want this room to be about. I want this room to be an entire tribe of people who are thinking and talking shit just like me. I don't give a damn about anything else. Yes, I know all the things that may happen. I'm wildly aware. Wildly. I am very aware. But that's not the way I deal with my shit, man. That is not the way I deal with my shit. And I'm not going to deal with it that way. I'm going to deal with it by looking at how to get over it and moving the fuck on. Like, I can't tell a bunch of people about how hard it was because that's wasting time and making me think about it more. Instead, I got to solve it and just move the hell on. This weekend, because we're talking about fuck the disabilities, I had an awesome ass weekend. So this weekend, I'm going to my brother's house for my mom's birthday party. No, I cannot tell anybody how old my mother turned. Because I'm a, I'm a gangster son, man. I don't send my mama out that way. My mama, I got my mama's back. She got my back all the way. So I'm not sharing that. I'm, I'm not sharing that. Either way, we slide over to the south side of Houston. Now, if you got a disability, a limitation, especially the disability, man, handicap, whatever your handicap is, just being in the car can be a long as awful as ride of some painful shit. The bounces, the bumps, the stops, the breaking, the going, all of it, man, can just be hard. The fact that your legs are not in the position of a wheelchair anymore, that can be hard. So we got to make this trip. And the first good thing that I overcome is that I've been feeling bad for the last couple of weeks because I have not had my electric wheelchair. When you know it, what shows up by UPS on a Sunday, the day that we are leaving, and I mean, they showed up right when we get ready to leave. It was the battery to my old electric wheelchair. Need that shit, man. So I'm all the way crunk. I am crunk. Yes, I've been waiting for the battery. I ordered the battery myself, and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And when it didn't show up Saturday, I'm thinking, God, leave the next chance I'll see it is Monday now. I know it ain't gonna be here Sunday, but damn it, showed up Sunday. So that's a hell of a win. First great, first point to a great weekend. Love that, man. Love that. So we get there on top of it, you know, if you have a mechanical wheelchair versus an old school big Bertha regular ass wheelchair, what the tell me the differences are your regular big Bertha wheelchair is a struggle to fit anywhere. All wheelchairs are a struggle. But the reason why you pay all that extra money for the expensive wheelchairs are how well they break down, how easily they transport. They usually weigh less despite all the doohickeys and whatnots on them, easily weigh less. So we had the cheap Walmart chair, man. And when we use that sucker, we damn near can't even use the back seats to the Tahoe. Not enough room, bro. Not enough room. We got to lay all this shit down at the back. Then fold the wheelchair up. Then put the wheelchair inside on top of all that. Kids, somebody ain't rolling. Somebody might be sitting ugly in the middle of the aisle between seats and shit right on the floor. No seat belt. It gets ugly that way. So we hardly ever do it. We just, I just, I just don't roll. So when the wheelchair shows up, I have a good wheelchair. All the seats are up in the Tahoe. Everybody can bounce. Off we go. Yeah. Heading to the south side. Hour long drive. Like I told y'all, you got to deal with all of the bouncing, the pain, everything that comes with being disabled in a moving bill. When we get there, I have everywhere I go, I'm bringing my needs. So I'm bringing, if I need cannabis, I'm bringing it. I bring my tinctures in case I have spasms and seizures. I bring my gratitude journal so I can stop and write shit out if I need to. I bring phone chargers because everybody should bring a phone charger. Extra battery. And of course, I bring, I already told y'all, I started off with that, the smoking equipment. But that's the way I feel. Hold up, hold up. But that's the way I feel. What you about being stuck in one place with no movement. So I get there, it's the weekend, this is this is this is this weekend, Kendrick Gavon, your agent of gratitude. So we get there, man, and 
even though I smoked right before I left, and even though I had a tincture or two drop on the way, all that shit is doing is keeping me level. It's keeping me as close to level as it can. I'm still bouncing. I'm still stressed. I'm still anxious. I'm still worried. So I'm taking all this shit to go. We get there. I tell my brother right away, yo, man, I know mom and dad are here, but um, dog, I got some ground up chronic. I got to go in and take some medicine, bro. Like I got to I got to smoke and like take a hit or two. He says, yo, no problem, man. Go out there and go outside in the back. I got it all cleared away for you. Problem. Kendrick Avant, your agent of gratitude, did not bring all the equipment for the doggone Snoop Dogg G pen. I use the G pen vaporizer. I don't like the herbal vape pens, the liquids and all that kind of stuff. I don't feel like that shit is anywhere close to what I need for the MS. Just give me the goddamn flour. So I got the flour ground up and I realized I don't have all the pieces to it. How am I going to smoke if I don't have all the pieces to it? I can't roll. I don't have any J papers, man. And I'm just thinking, this is going to be hard. Oh, this is going to, this is going to suck. Brother comes out. Yeah, man. Are you, you having a problem out here? Look like you're struggling, bro. Yeah. 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 Look, man, I know you don't smoke anymore. Proud of you. But, um, man, I didn't bring the right pipe and I don't got nothing to roll up on. I need some smoke, man. I really do. He looks at me. Shit, I got you. Goes inside the house, comes back out. He has two or three different bongs. <laughs> one of them is a water bong. He's like, yeah, man, I still got all my goddamn equipment and shit. So take whichever one of these bongs you need. Smoke as much as you need. Do what you got to do, man. Take care of yourself. Cool beans. Hell yeah. That was win number two. The limitation with the cannabis. Smashing me, leaning me, had me stressing, tripping. My brother comes out. Eases all that over. Two wins. Great thing. Great thing. Take a little break while I inhale on my cannabication. So that ends up being win number two. My brother helps me smoke. Win number three comes in like this. Everywhere I go, I am what you call a pescatarian lifestyle, pescatarian diet. That means I'm super heavy on veggies and the only meat I'm going to eat is fish. That's it. <coughs> fish and seafood. Lobsters and everything, I'm smashed on that. No, no more crawfish, no more um, no more shrimp. Stand away from trying to stay away from the bottom feeders. But I was still lean on catfish though. But you get what I'm saying. I'm trying to get better with all that. Everywhere we go, we're in this habit. We always bring something for me to eat. My wife is always bringing extra little salad packets, extra little snacks. She puts it away in Tupperware and keeps it in the purse. She brings the big purse. Fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about, man. All girls have a big purse and that small, cute purse. The big purse is for bringing heavy-duty shit. So if you go into the movies, you tell your girl, bring the big purse. That way we can sneak some snacks, some goodies, some Red Bull in that mug and stay away during the movie. The shit that we do. But at this point, I'll tell y'all about the weekend story. So we slide up. God, where I was. Oh, he let me smoke. Smoke out. Um, where was I going with that story? I have completely forgotten where I was going with that damn story. Oh, that's right. My wife usually bring me something to eat. We didn't bring anything to eat. We just had to burn out. I told him I'm not even going to worry about it. Get there. My brother has some salmon patties and some, um, and like some, just some big salmon, just some big salmon fillets he'll throw in the grill for me. That's win number three, dog. Because somebody looking out for you. If you have a disability, a limitation, there are so many times that you may go to a family event and ain't nobody taking your diet serious, nobody taking your health serious. You know people bullshit on mental health, but even your physical health becomes bullshit to them. They don't really pay attention to your diet. They don't really respect that you have this diet. To them, they hit you with the old school lines. If you're hungry, you'll eat it. No, homie. I am hungry and I still should not eat this because I got illness and this is how I treat myself and everything else. So my brother having patties there was awesome. I mean, they, they, were, they were showing real love. The fact that my brother grilled them patties and slid them to me on a paper plate with nothing else, no buns, no pico, no sauce, 
nothing. You just slid some hot ass grilled patties to me and told me, well, when we eat them, all we do is put $1,000 on it. Well, shit, what the hell a $1,000 in that thing, bro? You gave me just some cooked salmon patties, some burger patties. What the hell? Either way, I, ain't eat. I, I grew up good. I, I ate both of them. Good job. Ate them like a burger. All I did was put on mine was um some type of mustard. Yeah, bread, stuff, mustard, and I ate mine with chips. Should not be eating chips. I'm so I'm supposed to be staying away from gluten. I'm supposed to be ducking away from sugar. Not supposed to have any of that inflammatory type food. But this weekend, shortcoming, show set, special situation, your mama's birthday. Fuck it. Went on ahead and grew up good. So that was win. That was another win. That was win number three. Buses in my music, man, them buns get played. See, I'm the king of my throne. East Texas till I'm gone. Win number four comes in, man, we actually came on home. So when we left and headed to my brother's house, we were 100% set on, we got to stay. A whole hour drive, really an hour 20 minutes to get there. Y'all know I can't help drive with a damn thing. Now I'll stay awake on the passenger side. I will play, I will play with the music, talk to the kids. I'm going to sing out loud, all type of shit. But if you're looking for me to be the help driving, no sir. I do not have your back on that type of bullshit. But the wife decided, let's go and come on home. It'll be easier for you to get to sleep. You can't get upstairs to a bed. You know your ass can't sleep on the couch because of how fucked up your back is. No, let's just, I'm going to go I'm, I will just get us home. You stay awake. And we came on home. That was win number four. So that made it just in a spectacular weekend, man. Despite all the limitations, all the bullshit, the people around me showed extra care with the food, with getting me back. The people around me showed extra, extra care. And I'm not going to forget that because like I'm telling you, it is so many times you go around family and friends and they're not making the adaptations to what you need. Or they'll do this. They'll make the adaptation that they want to make for you. In their mind, what they're doing, one, two, and three, A, B, C, is at the top of your priorities. That, that's what you really fucking need. And that is not what you need at all. They're just doing shit that they think you need, haven't talked to you. It'll damn near hurt, man. It'll damn near hurt when you realize people are doing you that way. They're just doing whatever they think because it's like whatever's easy for them. Example. Let me give you an example of what I am talking about. Whenever we are kicking it with family or friends in spaces, I'm fully aware that I will not be able to get around and have all the space that I need to because I'm in this wheelchair. Cool. I get that. I get that. I'm fully aware that I'm probably the only person sober, not drinking. Cool. I get that. I get that. Because of that, people think that all I need to be good in that situation is just to put me in the corner. No, duh. That's not how you work me. If you put me in the corner, at least give me the goddamn cell phone charge and shit like that so I can sit over here and plug up my phone and do things. I'm a businessman. I got shit to do. Tell you something else that people do. People, which people, you show up to somebody's house and like I tell you about the food. It is important to have some space to get around, to move around. Yo, duh, I don't want even want to be invited if I get to the spot and there, is, there are no modifications, accommodations for me in this wheelchair. Like me being there is a worse place than just being at the crib by my damn self. Don't bring me to no bullshit that's not set up for you, boy, man. Don't do me like that, man. Life is hard enough. It really is. Do not invite me to bullshit if you have not checked it out to see if this wheelchair is going to make it. Because y'all know damn well, been in that wheelchair, no disabled person wants to constantly ask for your help getting to the bathroom, getting in and out the front door, getting in and out the kitchen. We don't want to ask for people's help doing any of that regular normal shit. So you checking out and you telling me, oh, it's a big patio. 
fucking help me at all, man. I need modifications and accommodations for this damn wheelchair. I need to be able to get around. They don't do that. They don't do that at all. Show up and show up and with the food. You got a bunch of food. But you have nothing there that's for me. Like nothing there for a pescatarian. No, no veggies, no fruits. That leaves me in a bad spot. It really does. It leaves a lot of people with these disabilities and limitations, leaves us in a bad spot and leaves us trying to bandage up and put things together so we can still hold it down. That's what I'm talking about, man. And this weekend, I didn't have that. This weekend, I had people looking out for me every damn step, every damn corner. I felt the love and it was awesome, dog. It really, really was. So with that being my story and I'm going to end this thing on the first Monday. Is this the last Monday of the month? No, it's not. It's the first Monday of the Gratitude Journal Challenge. And that's let me tell you all about that right quick. If you have low confidence, if you are struggling in your relationships, if you are really trying to turn the corner and be better despite the bullshit, despite the limitations, despite everything negative going on around you, that I have a mindset over bullshit gratitude journal challenge that will start today, Monday, April 18th at 8 p.m. Central. You follow me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and that's how you'll access the live. And in this live, for two weeks, Monday through Friday, weekends off for y'all, Monday through Friday again, I want to go through and personally model how to fill out the gratitude journal. You're going to hear me tell these stories of how to be better. You're going to hear me give these call to actions. You're going to hear these interesting notes and details, the tips and strategies, the routines to using mindset over bullshit. I'm going to share some of the herbs I smoke to deal with my own condition. I'm going to share some of the CBD I use to deal with my own condition. All of these are the different tools I use to put mindset over bullshit. And it always starts and ends with you. I can show you all the tools in the world, man. But girl, if you don't use the tools, it's not going to fucking matter. I can talk to you as soft and as sweet and in your special love language and using your learning language. But if you don't put the energy out there, if you don't put the activity behind it, if you're not actually trying to do the shit, it ain't gonna make you, it will make you know better. That's why this Monday at eight o'clock, I will be modeling how to fill out your gratitude journal. I'm doing this because I want everybody else to feel better, to know that being better starts with your intention, with you actively pursuing a better life. You can't sit around and wait for somebody else to do that shit for you. You can't sit around and hope your kids start paying attention. You cannot sit around and hope any loved one starts giving you the love that I talked about earlier that I got this weekend. That shit, you cannot wait on it. You know you cannot wait on it. You know damn well you can. That's why the Mindset Over Bullshit Gratitude Journal Challenge starts tonight, 8 o'clock Central, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You can follow me, and I'm going to show you all how to put together that Gratitude Journal. I even have a free PDF that shows you the outline of how I do my own spiral. That's all you need. A spiral. You can look at that free download at KendrickGavant.com on the Gratitude Journal. That way you can see all the different little pieces and elements and topics that I use in my Gratitude Journal. The King's Notes, the Queen's Thoughts, the Goals, all that good stuff. Because the better your Gratitude Journal is, the more activity you put into it, the less negative thoughts you have. It's that simple. It always is that simple. You fuck with me, but all that work is on you. Fuck with me, Kendra Gavant, your agent of gratitude. And that work, that work is on you. So get with me. Appreciate y'all for rocking with me. And I will see y'all tonight at 8 o'clock p.m., Mindset over bullshit, gratitude journal challenge, limitations, low self-confidence. If you're always angry about shit, if all the negative thoughts are bouncing around in your head, 
Come fuck with me, dog. Let's put this shit together. Queen, let's put this shit behind you. Let me show you how to fall in love with your damn self and change the perspectives that you have been holding. I'm out, man. Y'all be pretty. Stay grateful. I salute. I have primary progressive multiple sclerosis, so I fuck with pain all day. It's in my legs, I got nerve pain, the fire, the crushing damage. I struggle sleeping because of spasm so much. Cannabis cannot fix everything. But the CBD products at VibesHTX.com give real pain relief. My favorite is that Cloud 9 Syrup because it relaxes my anxiety, but I don't feel high. So I can still hang around the kids, play and giggle and laugh with them. They have a CBD MD freeze that is the ultimate Tylenol. Listen, the experts Peter and Isaiah at VibesHTX.com will even deliver to you in the Houston area. Check out VibesHTX.com. That's Vibes with a Z. V i b e z h t x dot com for your cbd needs and your cbd questions